welcome to the Pride Night Gun Podcast. I am your host, Knott's Joe. And over the next few weeks, myself and JJ will bring you this exciting new feature. We will deliver fresh and exciting content from fun reactions and opinions, game analysis to the latest news from the Magpie world, and of course, our website, prideofnottingham.co.uk. Hello and welcome to the Pride Nungham Podcast, episode 21. I'm your host, Nuts Joe, and as always, your favourite co-host, Joe Jones, joins us. How's everybody doing? In this week's episode, we'll be reviewing the Knots game against Wimbledon at the weekend. We'll be looking at the latest news and updates in the transfer window. And we'll also be analysing Lee Curtis's comments on Stanley Abora's future at Meadow Lane. Stay tuned, it's going to be a good show. So Jamie Fullerton took charge of his first Knots home game as AFC Wimbledon visited Meadow Lane on Saturday. Now things unfortunately did not go to plan for the Magpies because... Tom Elliott opened the scoring after just nine minutes and then Andy Barcham got the winner seven minutes from time. So it was a 2-0 defeat for Knott and Jamie Fullerton's first home game finished not very well. Yeah, you knew Notts County was going to struggle to get into this game. You know, um, very early on, Wimbledon was pressing and they was looking good going forward and there was building play. Um, well, they looked like a very s- solid unit. And you just felt that if Notts was going to get anything out of this game, you needed to see a, a response from some of the players. But you didn't. And it was quite frustrating to see because at half time, I couldn't see us getting into it. I mean, it was 1-0 for a long period of time. And if there was any signs for Notts to get back into this, you would have seen chances come into the game. And unfortunately for Notts, we only really had a free kick that we should have probably scored from. It was a spectacular save from the FC Wimbledon um, keeper. But, you know, we didn't really do too much apart from that. And it was just very frustrating to see Knotts play players out of position. Um, you know, I'm not going to say too much about Jamie because he's going to make mistakes early on because, you know, he's a new manager. It's his first career in management with Knotts. And, you know, he's going to make mistakes. But it was just very frustrating to see that we had no um, game plan. We left the changes too late. You know, for me, Liam Noble and um, Ronan Murray made a difference when they came on. You know, they, they didn't do too much, but they did a lot more than some of the players that had remained on the field for longer spells of the game. And they, they just changed it. We looked a different side when Liam Noble came on. And I would have played them from the start. I think that, you know, the frustration that was clearly noticeable for people like Adam Campbell would have been different. You know, a lot of people have been saying to me, was would it would have been a, a bit too lightweight up f- front if we had Moy and um, Noble on at the start because they're fairly small. But I disagree. They're tricky players, they're fast and they're direct. And it's what what we really were lacking. We were too defensive. And it was just very disappointing from, from the onset with Nuts because it was just one of them games you could tell that we had very little idea of how we could get a result from them. What I noticed was that Knots were pretty much playing without much cohesion. You know, they were almost like all over the place. And when it came to the final third, there was just nothing there. There was very little to offer. I mean, at one point, one of our plays, you know, just smashed a ball into into the cop, you know, just out of pure frustration. And, you know, you could see it get to them. Um, in terms of defence, I, I, I don't think we did too badly, to be fair. I mean... I suppose that's one difference from when Moniz was in charge was that at least now the, there is a bit more to the defence. I mean, we managed to shut out a lot of attacks, but, you know, with uh, with Wimbledon being quite a strong team on the attack, I mean, the game that they played on Saturday was like their seventh unbeaten game away. So clearly it's a team with good pedigree that's challenging up there in uh, in League Two. Um but I mean, the the Crawley game that was that was a bit of a smash and grab, really. Um, you know, we were very good defensively, and then having I mean, Philip Valencic, he he took his chance very well, and uh, earlier in the game he'd uh, he missed like a city. You know, he scuffed the chance pretty badly. So um, you know, but we didn't have that same kind of you know we didn't have the look uh, against Wimbledon in terms of up front but there wasn't really much creativity either um I mean I'm kind of going by Jamie's words of giving players a chance so you know there's going to be a bit of trial and error in this case and not starting noble I mean you could argue that it was done as a almost like to send out a message really the fact that because He's had his uh, disciplinary issues. Um, it was a case of, you know, we're not going to put him straight into the team because, you know, he needs to kind of, you know, because he's uh, he's had a couple of disciplinary issues, he should be maybe pushed to the subs and, uh, you know, while other players are given the chance. So I can kind of see where he's coming from, bringing him on later on in the game. But ultimately, yeah, it, it wasn't a particularly good game. And among the fans, there didn't really seem to be much optimism. You know, the the kind of the, the good mood that was set by Crawley kind of instantly evaporated with the Wimbledon game. Um, but I mean, 
I'm so positive that Jamie knows what he's doing and uh, as uh, as the season goes on that things will click into place. He'll he'll have his established plays, you know, he'll know uh how to play them and you know, once he's had a, a good thorough look and, and test of them. So I'm not gonna look too much into this defeat just yet. Well, I don't really think we have to, to be fair, because it's only two games and you need to give him a chance. You know, he's a new manager. Um, we can't really judge him on the perils of a different, you know, ex-manager. You know, I do miss the style of play that Money's brought at home because it, it was exciting at times. And if he could just sort the defence out just a little bit more, you know, it would give us a chance because he sets us up too defensively, in my opinion. And, you know, playing Adams on the left side of midfield, I didn't agree with that. Um, you know, there was other things. I would have put Liam Noble on. Quite clearly, we needed somebody who could be energetic and bring play into um, the opposition off and... You know, just create a, a chance. You know, he did say that everyone's got a, a clean slate, and I just feel that by leaving him on the bench, it, yeah, it might send a message, as you said, Joe. But for me, you know, we needed him, and it was quite clear that you know, if Stanley Abor ain't going to play, you know, we we need somebody who can pass the ball, who can be direct and move the ball forward. And I just feel it was a big mistake to leave uh, Liam Nable out myself. I mean, you can argue that us as Knots fans that have been watching the team in now every match day for us, it's almost like stating the obvious. But for someone like Jamie, who's coming from a different club, I mean, OK, he's still in Nottingham, but, you know, he's he's not going to be trying to, you know, he's going to be wanting to make up his own mind on the players. So even though all the fans will have like their own favourites and so on, he's kind of trying to gauge it for himself, watching the players on the training ground. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't the best of games. You know, it was quite disappointing. It was a bit dour at times. It didn't really seem to have much imagination going up front. But, I mean, I was saying this on the forum and at the game, that I would rather have a manager who would give us 1-0 wins, several goalless draws, and then... You know, if it comes to defeats, you're talking like single goal defeats um, rather than someone who's kind of got the Kevin Keegan school of, of football, which is, you know, they'll score five, we'll score six. You know, it might be exciting for the neutrals. I mean, you know, but before the game, I was in the Navi watching uh, Norwich Liverpool and that ended 5-4. Fantastic if you're a neutral, but for, for fans of both teams, you know, there's no joy. I mean, Norwich would have been absolutely gutted and even Liverpool you know they they were saying like the manager was wasn't happy with that performance and likewise I'm um, it's kind of similar to how I'd, I'd see my own team I would rather have a team that defends that does smashing grabs goes forward because at the moment the most important thing is results we're, we're in a poor league we're not doing very well in that league so you know I don't think it's about entertainment now I'd rather see games like the Crawley game and okay we're gonna have a few blips like like in, uh, against Wimbledon but going forward I'm hoping that the experience from that will be taken in good stead and we can hope hopefully get a good solid team going I disagree mate I think that it's important that we are playing entertaining football because that builds confidence the players will see that in defensive issues it will, it will steady their nerves they will know that we're able to get results you know just grinding out results is not the way that we need to do it yes it's important that we get the result but it's also the way that we do it I, I, I totally disagree with you know just grabbing results as they come because solid performances build a good momentum behind the squad and at this stage in time yes we need to keep away from the bottom half of league two but I think we will and I, I think that the main important goals in, in 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 this division is making sure that we're setting ourselves up playing decent football we don't have to be Barcelona or Arsenal not not at all but you know being able to actually play entertaining football to keep the fans there to keep the support there it adds to the momentum and it keeps us going you know fans aren't going to go just to see us win a game they want to see a bit of bit of skill a bit of entertainment they want to know that we're able to get a result and if we're not able to um, be convincing on the field it's just going to be a bit a bit downer you know fans won't want to see not being at a side that will only be able to grab a result on the one or two attacks they want to see us constantly going for it they want to see us being in games they don't want to see us being afraid of anyone so for me it's important that we play good football but defend at the same time well I have to disagree with you there as well because we're in league two we're in an absolutely dour league you know don't get me wrong, I love seeing fast-flowing attacking football, but we're in a division of plodders where, as you saw, the referees aren't going to help us. They're basically going to be allowing anything short of GBH, pretty much. Um, and, you know, we had this idea of having exciting, fast attacking football under my knees. And, you know, in a sense, he was delivering because up front, you know, we, we'd be scoring three, four, five in a game. But the problem is we'd be conceding loads at the back. And, you know, I would, like I said, I, I'm, I'm being logical, pragmatic, 
possibly even a bit cynical here, but you know, I would I would much rather see a game which, you know, okay, we, we should be going forward. You know, we, we shouldn't be just doing like a you know Greece two thousand and four, if anyone remembers that tournament, you know, like literally just parking the bus. You know, there's gotta be some kind of attacking intent. But at the same time I think, you know, we, we have to build from the back. We have to have a good, sturdy defence. And if that means a couple of games that aren't very entertaining but will yield nil nil draws one one draws one nil wins two one wins that kind of thing then you know all that matters really is just getting as many points as we can on board and then uh, building on that next season it doesn't matter if we're entertaining if we lose you know four one four three to uh, you know teams like Morecambe that have got a prawn on the badge of course it's important because at the end of the day we we need to be having shots on target the past couple of games haven't been you know too kind with shots on target and until we actually build up our play better you know there's no point in sitting back because you know being in games of where we just attack and a fluke a goal you know we're, we're asking for trouble we are asking for trouble we need to play games smart it's not about playing entertaining football for 90 minutes but being able to convincingly play a team and actually look good in a match. We need to be doing that. That's the way that it has to be. Fans aren't going to come to see Notts County play a game where we def- we, we defend, we part the bus, and we're afraid to take a team on. We have no idea how to attack. You know, we know how to attack and we can do, you know, but we need to see it. We need to structure the defence, which is fine, but then move forward and be convincing with our play going forward. It doesn't have to be too pretty, but it just has to be direct and it has to be, you know, clear play. You know, we need that, you know, otherwise we're, we're asking for a trouble if we drop our heads and all of a sudden became scared of our own shadows. You know, we need to be confident in games. We need to build right. If we don't do that, you know, it's going to go the other end of the spectrum. It's going to be too hard to come back into games. Otherwise, you know, there's no point playing a match just to, to, to go into a game wanting to win 1-0. We, we should be going into games wanting to, to score as many goals as possible. It's not always possible, but that's the way it should be. There's going to be loads of varying... Uh opinions on on this subject if you want to go on the proud nottingham forum and uh, contribute to this discussion about whether we have a duty to entertain or whether it should be about grinding out results or you know ideally the answer lies somewhere in the middle but come on the website and join the conversation so now we move on to transfer news at medellin jamie fullerton has came out in a local media interview where he stated that he's not in a rush to sign any players and my personal view on this is that we do need a centre back, but we do need to reduce the squad load. I mean, I think I think it's very important that we actually, you know, reduce the squad so there's, you know, players clearly know what what they're doing. If some of these players are clearly there for the reserve team, that should be made known. You know, I don't think we should include them with the first team unless you know we've got injuries and then they get called upon. You know, for me, I I, I would love to see a sign a centre back. You know, I'm a little disappointed that we've missed out on a, a, a potential signing, but I think that there are players out there that we could get, and just find, signing a steady defender would be a, a great boost to the squad, and I think that it would make a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, I agree. At, at the moment, the squad, though, it is just so packed. I mean, there's all these players that have been signed and uh, no one really seems to know if they're in the first team or they're in the reserve team or, you know, it's all just a big mishmash, you know. In the summer, I mean, it, it might have looked great that we've signed, you know, one player after the other and there was just, like, so many coming in and it was, you know, it was really heartening to see. But then it got to a point where you just think, like, really? Like, how many players do we need? And and that's had a massive knock-on effect on, on this season as well to just see such an unsettled squad. So, certainly, I think we do need to get rid of some players, you know. I don't think that the winter transfer window is a particularly good time to do this, though, because, really, you need pre-season, you know, you need to extend the extended summer transfer window to really conduct business, you know, take in time over who's going out and who's coming in you know you can't really do that in January so it's it's kind of like we're in a rock and hard place at the minute because you know we can't really bring in that many more players because it will just be you know sort of adding more and more to what's already an oversubscribed squad yeah but that's why it's important that we actually manage to get rid of some of the players I mean we've released Nicky Rowe but apart from that we haven't heard any news there's certain players that we've not seen feature they're not even in the reserve team you know in my opinion we, we should be making an effort to release some of the players or at least pitching them to clubs I know it's hard but you know we need to narrow down the squad even if they went out on loan I think it'd make a huge difference for me you know it'd send a, a clear message to players that they've got a chance to play you know and I think a lot of the problems within the, the, the current setup I think it does emulate straight from the fact that you know some players aren't sure what they're doing they're not sure if what position they're playing they're not sure what their instructions are in the game you know 
uh, just a few weeks back, my money's had a, had a pop at uh, Hollis for, you know, doing doing something that like wasn't uh, too keen to see. And, you know, you, you want a, a defender to feel comfortable doing doing their own decisions in games. If they can't make their own judgment call, it's going to narrow down what they can do in games. I agree with what you're saying. The only thing is, at the time of recording, it's the evening of the 25th of January. And, you know, there really is not much time to really conduct much business. I mean, OK, you've got loans, um, but in terms of, you know, anything concrete, the transfer window isn't open for much longer. So I don't know really how much more time we can realistically conduct, you know, sort of good business in terms of selling on, moving on someplace and then bringing in more. It's like I said, it is just a massive mess. It's, I'd like to think of it as basically having like a teenager's bedroom that's just cluttered everywhere and it needs a massive tidy up but you can't really do it until you know until the kids like you know at uni or a asleep over or whatever um so i mean yeah i do think you know not beating around the bush i do think that we do need to bring in at least one solid central defender um it's whether anyone would really want to you know come in bearing in mind how big the squad is bearing in mind how unsettled and how little game time that there's been you know i do wonder whether a player would think okay yeah, I'll, I'll i'll come to knots and you know they, they wouldn't be sure if they'd you know get in the first team they, they'd just be like on a rotation system almost so it's it'll be a difficult one so in terms of players coming into middle lane jamie's made an habit of recalling players who have been out on loan and you know, we've seen um, Blair Adams return from Mansfield. He was doing quite well there. And the fans, you know, really wanted to see him sign for the Stags. And um, we've also seen the return of Jordan Richards, who has gone back out on loan to an Irish club. And, you know, he's really getting a chance to see what players he has at Knotts. You know, this will hopefully, you know, make his squad selections on match days more routine towards having a, a, a consistent on 11 which i feel is important um and hopefully it will pave the way to seeing other players go out on loan potentially you know a center back coming in but you know it's all a start right now i mean with uh with blair i, I can understand why he's been uh recorded and is, is being kept on because he has been really really good for mansfield i mean um in terms of playing for knots you, you know he may not have had the best game against Wimbledon but then again kind of you know the whole team was a little bit off par then so might not be you know really the best sort of gauge of, uh, of his skill bearing in mind how good he's done for Mansfield but um, no certainly I, I agree with Jamie's uh, view of you know giving all these players a fair chance so I, I know that um, Adam Murray the Mansfield manager he uh, kicked off because you know he was convinced that that player would would sign on you know either for an extended loan or you know even uh, sign permanently but you know tough really that's all i can say you know he's uh, he's, he's on our books and we want to see you know what he can uh, reproduce for knots um yeah as for as for jordan i mean he's come back and i know that the uh, boston manager or, or director i don't really recall it's the manager was it the manager okay to be fair boston are a bit lower down so i don't really you know focus that low down but uh but yeah um he's he's just gone out on loan again hasn't he so and, and i thought that he was going to be given a chance but um yeah so uh, that's a bit of an odd one really but no um i said we, we've got loads and loads of players at knots and i can't blame jamie for you know wanting to to see what even the kind of you know players that were forgotten in the knees what they're capable of so yeah i mean in a way you kind of have to it's, it's a bit of an odd time really for I mean, whenever a manager comes in mid-season, he hasn't really got the chance to do trial and error as a manager would in, in pre-season. You know, it's not like you haven't got all the friendlies, you know, against the non-league teams to kind of really do trial and error. It doesn't matter if you lose because they're just friendlies. Um and then bigger teams to, you know, sort of place to really prove themselves. He's kind of having to make do in the league. I mean, we're not in any cups anymore either. Um but it's yeah, so it's, uh, it's 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 a bit of an odd one, really. But I mean, I'm glad that he is giving the players a chance, and even if it doesn't work out, at least you can say that he's been fair. You know, he hasn't prioritised anyone, he hasn't frozen anyone out. So you know, I'd like to see that uh, continue. And for my opinion on the return of Blair Adams, I mean, I, I've, I've made comments on the Prime um community and even on the social media pages. I'm not really against Blair. As a person or as a player, I just don't see him as being someone who's been consistent with knots. You know, he's one of those players who seems to get chance time and time again. And under Derry, I think he played the better part of his football. 
at Notts County. Under Moneys, he seemed to go missing too many times. And, you know, luck could fall down on um, Moneys' tactics. But I'm just a bit disappointed to see him return, you know, given a straight chance in the team, playing at left side midfield. You know, I can't really call him for that, but I didn't think he had a very good game. And it was a bit frustrating to see him, you know, knock the ball out to the, um, you know, past the line for Thrones constantly. Like his control just seemed totally not there. Uh, he seemed to leave it at Mansfield, in my opinion. But, you know, I would have stuck him back at left back. You know, he was consistent there with Mansfield and that's where he should have played. We should have pushed Milson up. You know, he's more of an attacking player. He can hold the ball. He can, you know, he can pass it around. And, you know, it's a totally different player over Blair. Blair, for me, isn't really much of a defender. He's more of a you know, go forward, but he should be playing at left back for me. I, I don't think he should be any further up than that. I know a lot of fans, including myself, thought they'd be able to play that position, but, you know, very little signs on, on Saturday that he could be a left-sided midfielder. You know, he didn't have the direction to take players on. You know, he just looked very awkward on the ball and you, you don't want to see players like, like, you know, yeah, we've now recalled him, give him a chance, but allow him to settle as a left back, you know, you know, allow also Urit to move to the right side of the fence because I think that'd be very important to tying up the back defence, you know, you know, if we don't, if we don't sort that out and get the basics right there, you know, we're going to keep having problems. Hi, I'm Mike Edwards and you're listening to the Pride of Nottingham podcast. Now, recently, a club official told us on the Pride of Nottingham forum that Will Hayhurst is out long term with a cruciate knee ligament injury. Likewise, we only found out that Isal McLeod was out injured on the day of the Crawley match when he was supposed to be playing. You know, I think it's something that Knotts could focus on, you know, delivering news. I mean, even a few seasons back when Gary Little was injured after playing Bristol City, you know, we didn't hear much. And, you know, it was only after a video went up on um, the Magpie player that, you know, any news was emerged. And, you know, I was quick to uh, make sure that, you know, fans were aware of what the update was. You know, I'm I'm sure the, the club put out messages you know, when fans ask questions. But I think for the wider census to be able to know what the updates are. I mean, I've spoken to my dad about this and he speaks about how Derby provide updates, you know, and it's p- perhaps something that the Nottingham Post could be asking occasionally or what's the latest with this, you know, what's exactly the injury with... Um, Stanley Abor because that's another one that you know people were unsure about um, there's a lot of rumours going around that currently um, he's got an knee injury and I don't know how, how true that is with Stanley Abor but it would just be so useful to know how long they're out for what the rough indication is I know that they can't uh, always be precise but a rough idea will give us an opinion I mean I'm sure fans would accept that things change and you know an injury might be more delayed a bit a bit like Ronan Murray after um, Ray came onto the on forum and mentioned that you know he'd be back by the end of the month and that was at the start of the season you know delays do happen because injuries do reoccur you start training again and you know you just niggle out that injury again and you know it's not plain sailing of you 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 have that time and you will come straight back in but I just think it'd be very useful to know from the club that a these players are injured obviously if it's one or two players it's not worthwhile but we seem to to be picking up a fair few that you know no one knows about I mean I certainly didn't know about Willie Hurst I I think I might have noticed it within an article a while back that he, he was doubtful but apart from that I have not heard anything about him being injured long term and it's something that fans will want to know. I know I know that people will be saying that Will Ayers hasn't really proved himself with Knotts, but at League Two, he could be doing that. And, you know, any player at Knotts, you really want to know what, what their current situation is. You know, are they injured? Are they out of favour? Would they be going out on loan? You know, the club will announce loans and signings. And I think that the injuries are something that we should really be picking up on and knowing a bit more about. That's just my general view. Now in this next section we'll be looking at some of the opinions on the Proud of Nottingham community. Now Lee Curtis recently said on uh, the Nottingham Post about Stanley Bora, he said, I think he's very good on the ball, he's one of the best passers, but defensively he is not good enough to play holding midfield. He lets players run off him and he doesn't track runs. Go and watch the first half of the Oxford game and see how much they used it to their advantage. Until he improves that side of the game, I don't think we will see much of him on a system position further up the pitch. Well, my personal views is, I mean, I, I think back at Stanley Abor and I think about the times of where, you know, he'll dig in and he'll win the ball back. And, you know, even when he loses it, he's a tight to win the ball back. You know, he's scrapping away to get it. And, you know, I, c- I can remember well, at least on a, a few occasions where he's lost the ball and then he's beat three players and coolly passed the ball to uh, to release an attacking player you know, to 
you know, to create a chance. And, you know, we have worse players on the field that don't defend. I mean, for me, a shine light would be Curtis Thompson. You know, he doesn't stop. He, he's an engine, you know, and that that's no, no, no denial. He can move the ball forward and he can defend. But, um, you know, um, Sandy Board certainly does a lot more than some players. And I think it's a bit harsh to say that he doesn't, you know, defend. And if this is the case that Jamie Fullerton doesn't see him as being somebody who can play an old and midfield role, you know, if we can't cater one of our best players into the team, I think it's a bit of a disappointment to be fair, because, you know, he should be a player that we build a team around. He should be somebody who really is a pinnacle player within knots. And it would just be very frustrating if we don't see um, Stanley Abora utilized in 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 games because he has a lot to deliver he has a lot to play and i'm sure with other people chipping in and defending i'm sure that his mistakes wouldn't be more noticeable you know because he might make mistakes you know all players do but uh it'd be a shame just to to waste that talent that we have in him you know because we don't have many players like him who, who can just you know coolly play the play the ball wherever he wants to you know, it's what we miss of uh, it's what we miss from Alan Smith. You know, being able to just spray the ball around, and you know, he doesn't have legs, but Stanley Abora does. And if we can build people around that can do defensive cover, I don't think it should be one man's duty, but I think it should be everyone's. You know, if a player sees that he's struggling to defend, you know, they should chip in. You know, I, I generally don't feel that he's a bad at defending myself I think he does deliver a lot more than just what uh, you know people think in the terms of attacking I think he is quite a good player in defence so I'd, I'd play him there myself yeah in terms of the opinion on the proud Nottingham community he seems to all be unanimous in support of Abora uh, Ivan's neck uh, wrote a comprehensive uh, post saying build the side round him only in England do we spend more time on the player's deficiencies than his strengths to when you have to score goals, Scott Bennett is a centre-back, Abora can hold the ball. If we are in possession, they can't score. He's the best player of his type in the division, just talk to the opposition fans. Now other opinions include Liam Pye who says, Fullerton won't gain support by leaving him out, not the right decision. Rivellino says, if not can't or won't find a role for Stanley in the starting eleven, then I would despair, to which North Ants Pye then added, Start despairing, my friend. While Pythagoras simply wrote, hashtag Stanley in. Okay, so here's another opinion by Northlands Pie who says, You should have asked him how Scott, not fast enough to carry a hat at a funeral, Bennett, can get into midfield in front of him. The boy looks like he's running through treacle with lead weights on his feet. And G-Town Jono added to that, Told you. He would rather be playing for you. We'd like to know what your views are. So if you'd like to head over to the Pranagam Forum and community and, you know, post your opinion on this discussion, just look out for the discussion which reads uh, Lee Curtis' thoughts on uh, Stanley Abora. Quite lively. So, yeah, we could do with your opinion. Just join the conversation. Now, that's all we've got time for in today's podcast. You know, it's been a joy as always, you know, to, to record our opinions. And it's nice to see that people are you know, tuning in, you know, we had a, a great response via our, our regular stream, Valley MP3, and our podcast website, which is podcast.co.uk. We also released this onto YouTube, which we think will, will do better within time when people become used to it. You know, we've put it up there as an added extra because we're trying to put out, you know, content that, that fans can engage with. So it's just an additional way to do it, and it goes onto our own page as well. So we do like hearing back. If you've got an opinion on, on any parts of this show, Please do add them. Let us know your opinion. You know, if you think that we, we, you know, if if your views are against something that we say, we definitely would like to hear that because you know, it's what keeps the discussion going. If you think I made a valid com contribution, or if you think Joe Jones has said something that's spot on, and you'd like to see it, just let us know because that's what we're here for. And I'd just like to thank you personally for taking the time to join us. I am your host, not Joe. Favorite co-host, Joe Jones. Thank you, and goodbye. Hey.